Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, what was the dark shadow that lurked inside the room of a young child? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number. But Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the program, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up over at ghostpodcast.com or Patreon. Use the Patreon app or go to patreon.com slash real ghost stories. $5 a month gets you access to all of our bonus episodes. Almost 400 of them now. Uh, it seems like I'm just saying 300 not that long ago. Uh, also, uh, all the uh, advanced episodes, the whole archive, all of it ad-free, commercial-free. It's updated all the time. Uh, so you get access to all that, all the stuff that you'd normally get on the feed, plus more. Uh, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program as we continue to uh, plow into uh, 2022. I mean, kind of. Kind of. Because for you and I, it really hasn't happened yet. For this one but, hour in the week, it's yeah, 2022 so, in January 11th. I'm going to pretend I'm plowing into it. Yeah. You know, I'm kind of apprehensive because I remember like 2020 sucks so bad that I was like, yay, 2021, because it can't be any worse than 2020. And then I think the first week my mom had a stroke. Yeah. You had a lot going on last January. So my hopes aren't high for 2022. Well, I mean, I'm going to set my hopes a little lower (laughs) and just be like, hey, you know, um, let's hope the power stays on this year. (laughs) <laughs> What's that? There's something like electricity and food. That's yeah. If we get that, I'm good. You know? It's like, oh my god, my car started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, so I'm gonna just look for small victories, maybe, and not think about. I just put a lot of hope into 20. I'm just <laughs> on, the because the, the other thing, like, so then you know, pandemic got better, it got worse, but in the meantime, my dog has been six months on hospice at this point. Mm -hmm. And so like, I haven't had a vacation for almost two years. I literally have not been out of town for almost two years because of the pandemic. And then I can't leave my dog. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's just, it was a weird year. Yeah. It was a weird year. It was. It was a really weird year for you. It sucked. It was weird. It was bizarre. It was, um, I, I said to Harper the other day, I, I said, you know, did you really <laughs> 365 days ago, you know, you know, what were we doing? You know, and it's like, you know, isn't that crazy? Just how much can change in the course of a year? You know, it was just kind of one and of things those you moments. don't even see coming. No, exactly. And it wasn't like it wasn't a, a commentary on anything negative or positive. It was just a Look how much can change in the course of a year. That's all yeah. It like was. when my mom had her stroke, I was just like, I got home from work, and then somebody calls me, and they're like, "Yeah, something's wrong with your mom." I'm like, "Like what? Yeah. She can't talk." <laughs> okay. Yeah. How do I find her? That was the like right at coming. the beginning. Yeah, it was like the first week or second week of January. Yeah, because we were joking, like it'll be a better year, and all of a sudden you texted me like, <laughs> "My mom has had a stroke." I'm like, "Oh, jeez." <laughs> Wow. Like we're I know. Just, and we're, I'm and lucky me, I'm the only one who lives in the same town as her, so everything uh, falls on me. Uh yeah. And I was uh, in the beginnings of uh uh of uh, uh, the divorce of, of or not the beginnings of it, but uh you know, in the, the thralls of going through that. So yeah, what a wonderful year. <laughs> but I do think, you know, like and I, and with all respect. Yeah. I think that it was a positive thing for you looking oh, back yeah. on it without a doubt, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, lots of, lot, lots has changed. No, I mean, it, it's all for the the better. And I, you know, I'm not saying anything negative here. It's, I wish everybody well, but um, no, I mean it, it, you know, it's just, it's one of those things just, it, it, that was a lot of readjusting and just, it was, it was a very much a year of readjusting during a pandemic where everyone is also trying to readjust in a completely different way. 
Uh, and I have a daughter that's also trying to readjust with all of that personally going on and then going back into school because she hasn't been in school for a year. Um, you know, she was doing homeschooling. So it was just like readjust, 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 readjust while the treadmill is spinning sideways. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, I, where, how do I, where, where do I plant this steak? Because Part of it's going, this is like a fucked up fun house of a year. <laughs> you know, it's like, like, what do you, what, what? So I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hoping for, uh, for better things, but really one thing that's helped me a lot this year, you just kind of got to go one day at a time and focus on that. The, the, and I'm someone who's not great at that. I've always been someone who's looking this far, uh, you know, 20 miles ahead of everything. Um, to a fault. And that's been difficult, but it's really helped me a lot to just kind of be less anxious about every random thing I could easily be anxious about. I, I don't want to take up all this time because we need to talk about ghost stories, yeah. but I totally relate to that because when my dog was diagnosed with this tumor six months ago and my cat was 20 and I lost my cat recently, but this whole year, I, I was having panic attacks because mm -hmm. my vet said you could wake up any morning and your dog could be gone. Mm -hmm. So in the middle of the night, I'm getting up five times a night, just peeking at him to make sure he's still breathing. And, and I had to gradually let go of that anxiety, mm -hmm. but it forced me to be present. Yeah. And that actually has been a true gift. It it's is like, I have to face it. I can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I have to deal with it every day. But it's forcing me to be now instead of that constant worrying about the future. Yeah. And so I think, so that would be one thing I would be grateful for 2022. Yeah. And my mom the same way. Like it forced me to be way more present with my mom mm -hmm. and so. actually be there more for my mom, obviously. Lessons learned in 2021. Yeah. Now, now I'd, okay, I'd, like, so I'd like to just apply them and, and say I, I learned a lot the last couple of years. Let's just take a break from school <laughs> and, and, and let's, uh, let's just have some time to live. Right. Yeah. And vacation to have some fun. Exactly. Exactly. All right. 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Real ghost stories online. Let's go to our first one. It says it all started with my dad. He kept telling us daily how he was seeing things as in bags in the corner of the house, hearing people talk to him. It was just, acting very different. He became extremely ill over the past month of him telling us this. And the night of Thanksgiving, my dad was very sick. The next morning, my dad had told my mom he was tired of living. But mom told him to just relax. And what he was seeing and hearing was all in his mind. He then said he was going to lay down in his room where he kept seeing a black shadow, locked his door, and then shot himself. About a few months after his passing, all of us, including my mom, started to see the shadow he was claiming to see. Then we were remodeling the bedrooms, and I had taken a few pictures. Didn't know my phone would capture videos with them having words. I said, get out. Then something about our mom. I have the recordings. Now my sister is also having things happen here at her house. Lights being completely ripped out of the ceiling, hearing the voices of people. It's starting to scare us all by the light fixture about to fall on my sister's head. We don't know what to do or even how to react. Was my dad telling us the truth before he died? Was he actually seeing this stuff? Does this stuff actually exist? None of us understand what's going on in our lives now. No one ever expected my dad to take his own life. Things are starting to get worse around her house. Things are actually being shaken around. And in the room where my dad took his life, it feels very heavy, like you can't breathe. And the smell, even knowing we changed the carpet, painted everything, still there. We've had a lady come inside the home where she said it was something very evil in there, that it took our dad from us. We don't know what to believe. We just know what's going on now is what my dad kept telling us about months before, but refused to listen. Now we're seeing the shadow, hearing the voices, and seeing things with our own eyes. We're very confused and looking for help. We don't know what to expect next. I'm worried it'll try to take my mom from us. So this sounds like a real-life horror story happening as they Ooh. write it. Yeah. 
I didn't, when you started with that story, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. That, and it's just, you know, number one, they need more help than you and I. Sure. Can, can give, but, you know, I do understand that, you know, mental illness or schizophrenia or something like that can present like that. Mm -hmm. Like where he's seeing things that nobody else is seeing. Sure. So, I mean, I think that if there's guilt over not believing him, I don't, I think they need to let that go. Yeah. Easier said than done. Sure. Obviously. Well, I mean, but who, but, I, mean, I mean, unless you listen to the that's show. That's how it, pre yeah. it would present like that. Yeah. It would be certain and, mental illnesses, and and if, if you know that there's things not right, and and you know doctors are already telling you that, then you know that's what you would be assuming. I mean, I wouldn't be. I mean, even though we've heard more ghost stories than anybody, the first thing I would be going to is not ghosts. It'd be right. like, like there's you know the brain's kind of slowly shutting down. It sounds like, and um, you know. It, There'd be some point I may wonder a little bit, but I certainly would not be thinking that when he's dead, I'm going to start seeing these things that he's been telling me about. Then is it, is it they're seeing what he was seeing or their dad was in such a, I think that would be a really weird energy in your house. If yeah. your dad was in such a dark, dark, dark place for a long time, mm -hmm. then ended up doing that which makes it even darker. Mm -hmm. And so just the energy alone would be dark. Then combine how you feel about it yeah, and your family and your mom. I mean, that's a lot to deal with, you know, and I don't know, like, do they own the house? Can they sell the house? I mean, you know, I really think they need out. I would actually for anyone who's gone through that, I w I think moving would be what you'd have to do. Yeah. And it's just sad too, because, you know, because they wouldn't have seen it, but then you feel all the guilt. Like we should have known more. We could have offered him more help. We should have, but if they would have listened to, I mean, they obviously knew what he was saying about a dark thing. Mm -hmm. How can you, prevent him from going dark like that and i don't know that's a tough situation i mean because you got to be asking yourself like well had i acknowledged this more had i had the conversation with him more and and did try to listen a little bit and not just brush it off would that have changed something would that have made him not feel so like not heard or more depressed you know i mean you'd have all these horrible things that are going to go through your mind and but, my guess is they had to, if someone like your father is in the house saying these things are going on, you're not brushing your dad off. No. He's obviously really suffering from it. Yeah. And you, and you're just trying to be there the best way you know how, how unfortunately at that moment you don't realize there is something dark lingering that I, I don't know how you get rid of something like that. And I think in many cases you don't. Uh, and just, is it, and is it, because, I, I mean, it could be something dark in the house, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Or did the dad create, did his death manifest that? I, don't, I mean, because it sounds something like... Something that he was seeing, I think it's, you know, through mental illness, could he have kind of created that? Oh, energy? I see what you're saying. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe he was the only one seeing it, which yeah. is why nobody else felt it. And now with his, that dark mm -hmm. energy... Yeah. I don't know. You added a and whole new, you would be, yeah. You would be super sensitive to that yep. now. I tell and you, I, I tell you what I would do. I would just get a boom box and, uh, and, and some, uh, sage leftover from Thanksgiving. And I'd put that boom box on my shoulder and I just walk around the house and I would just be singing this. Nothing's going to stop us now. No, uh -oh. <laughs> nothing is going to stop us. And uh, I think eventually that would probably scare the spirits away if you just had this on repeat for... Now, I honestly don't think the family is up to it, but Tony, I bet they would highly appreciate it if you would go over to their house and do that. Wouldn't that be fun? That's, you would be great. That would be great. Because um, who wouldn't want to hear Starship, nothing's going to stop us now. And you singing that at the top of your lungs. 
That's an, saging yes. the house with the boombox on your shoulder. Uh, here's just an interesting screwed up thought on ghosts. Um, you know, I believe we recognize a lot of them, or we should recognize a lot of them, just as as you know, and be respectful as you know we would with um, another person who's alive, because a lot of these pe- things were people. Um, and there's things that are darker and off that are not. But uh, here's a thought, though, too. If you have, uh, say, the asshole ghost in your house that was once a person, doesn't really care to listen to you or respect that you, it's your house now, they're just sticking around, could you drive them nuts by doing something like that? Essentially, you're, it, it, it's like, you know, stuff you see in, in like torture type things. Uh, you know, or, or things uh, in war where it's like, let's play Britney Spears on, you know, repeat <laughs> super loud for 72 hours. Um, could you drive away? I mean, if I was a ghost and I had a choice and like, oh, for the love of God, I'm not going to be sitting through number 568 of them playing this. <laughs> no. <laughs> I could get through maybe 20. 568, I'd be. Well, you know, the whole deal, like David Koresh in Waco, Texas. Yeah. I think it was the FBI. They did was, that. They did that. Yeah. And I can't remember what songs they were playing, but I heard once what some of the songs were, and it was about like that. Like you would go crazy. I think it was real hard rock, though. Yeah. That, I mean, that would be even more annoying because you couldn't sleep through that. Um, no, I mean, I just, could you could you get a ghost to leave by playing music that they really hate over it. I don't know. That's that's the newest um, uh, tactic that they're going to be using on uh, Ghost Adventures this next year. <laughs> Sweet. In uh, 2003, our next story starts. I was asked to house it for a couple who was going on vacation for a week to take care of their dogs. I decided to take a week off so I could stay in their house with the dogs throughout the day. My first night there, I made sure all the doors were locked and went downstairs since that's where I was going to be sleeping. Five minutes after I got down there, I heard the patio door upstairs open, and I heard footsteps walk across the floor. Then I heard what sounded like someone skipping down the stairs, and they skipped over the last step or two and landed very loudly on the landing. I had my phone in my hand, ready to call 911. As I was looking at the landing, there was no person actually standing there, but yet the shadow of a person was being cast on the wall. I kept leaning to the right like they were trying to see me. Then they ran back up the stairs, but this time there was no sound of any footsteps or anything. I ran up after them, but no one was there. I checked the patio door, and it was still locked. There wasn't even a place to unlock it from the outside. I checked the whole house, and there was nothing. The rest of the night, I continued to sit downstairs and listen to footsteps just run back and forth through the upstairs until about 5 a.m. Finally, the next morning, I heard the patio door open and close again, and it was gone. This continued to happen for the next few nights. On the fourth or fifth day, it started coming around in the daytime, too. At one point, it walked right up to me, but visually, you couldn't see anything. You could just hear what sounded like someone wearing socks and jeans walking. I went outside, and when I looked in through the window, I could see a black silhouette of a person standing there, even though I couldn't visually see anything inside the house. One morning, I was using the bathroom, and I heard it running towards the door, and the bathroom door got kicked in on me. Again, he couldn't actually see anything. I got really upset and yelled at it. That night, I thought it would retaliate because I yelled at it, so I told it that if it let me have the downstairs, it could have the rest of the house since I only had a couple of days left. It listened. Let me have the downstairs. I told the couple what happened, and they said they think it may have followed me somehow because they don't have anything there before. The week after they came back, they said all the light bulbs in the house burnt out at the same time. They only lived there for another year after that. And they have lived there for 12 years prior to this. See, that's where you get out there and you you just uh, crank up. Uh, let's see. <laughs> It'd be fun to DJ it, too, from your garage. Like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> So that's now, on the, uh, I do think that if all of the light bulbs went out in my house at the same time, spooky AF, yeah. but also I might think there was some kind of weird power surge in my house. Yes. 
Because it always freaks me out when it, like tonight, I went outside because I, I have a ginormous, very dark backyard. And so I have, I leave my porch light on at night back there because it's so freaking dark. So tonight I turn it on and immediately goes out. And it's always, it always scares me. There's something about the light bulbs going out suddenly because yeah. they're very dramatic. It's more fun when they explode. Yeah. So if something like that happened and they all went out at the same time, yeah. that would scare me. But then, you know, if you try to explain it, there could be an explanation for that. Yeah. A power surge. Or it could be haunted. Yeah. You know, or Randy could have hit the power line. Uh, down by the fleet farm. Um, that's, and, that, and Randy is now your ghost. Exactly. Uh, but the thing is, I mean, things like that can happen, but I mean, the timing on it is rather questionable in this story. Yeah. But it is scary when those lights go out. I was in my storm shelter once. This was in Wichita. And uh, there was like, it was the big one that was on the ground. And I think it like hit Spirit Aero Systems and some of Boeing. This was like almost 10 years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. Um and um, I, you know, I, I know a bit about like tornadoes because we've, you know, had to cover them on the air forever. And one of the things that I knew was uh, if, you know, it is coming towards you, uh, sometimes if it hits power lines and such, power surges will occur within the neighborhoods of where those lines essentially are being, you know, destroyed. Um, and I was listening to the radio, trying to figure out and hear where this thing is at. And it wasn't, it was like on a path that I thought was towards us, but luckily um, it didn't come and get us at all. Um, but all of a sudden, boom, uh, we still had power for a second. And then the light literally in the uh, tornado shelter blew up. Oh, oh! it didn't just go out. It blew up. I mean, that 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 signifies quite a power surge when the lights physically explode. Um, and I was thinking, shit, like. This thing is coming here. Nope. It ended up being uh, lightning struck the power box directly in the backyard. Um, and so then the transformer blew. Yes. And in turn, um, tons of other shit got fried in my house that moment. Um, but it was scary. I mean, it's like, oh, God. And loud. It's very loud. Yes. Yeah. Because you're, you're hearing the thunder on top of everything as everything explodes simultaneously. <laughs> That's freaky. It's like being in a David Copperfield magic act and then, uh, you know, suddenly, boom, like then the tiger like, comes out. Wait, there's supposed to be something behind the curtain. Exactly. This isn't supposed to be really happening. Like, this really sucks. <laughs> yeah. So I, I obsessively unplug things when it storms uh, because I've had so many things get destroyed that were plugged in during storms. That's like you my know, David Copperfield has a museum and it's like where they keep all the secrets to the magic shit. Oh, really? But you can't go in there. It's not open to the public. It's only people who are going to keep those secrets, like the as-need-to-know basis, like some maybe up-and-coming magician who's really awesome. But isn't that interesting? He's bought all of these old relics from, you know, bygone days mm -hmm. of other magicians, and, and the secrets are all in there, how he did all of his stuff. Oh, wow. So, like, somebody, mm -hmm. like, comes and knocks on the door. Can I see David? And he'll be like, hell no. I, and he like, spent I a David. lot of money yeah. on it. It's, like, it's expensive. I um, heard him on public radio one day. It was very interesting. He still does Vegas, doesn't he? I don't know. Because now he's got his museum. I've always wanted to see him live. I've never gotten to see him. And I should have so many times when I was in Vegas, but I never did. But, no. Yeah. I was trying to Just think FYI, of yeah. a museum nobody can go to. Remember the time that he made Tom Jones disappear and nobody's seen Tom Jones ever since? <laughs> it's not unusual. It happened. <laughs> That's old Tom Jones joke. It <laughs> happened and that no one's ever seen him again. That's it. All right, let's go to our first uh, caller. Hi, let's hear your ghost story. Hi, Tony. My name is Samuel. I've been listening to your show for quite some time now. I'm a night shift worker, so I like to listen to it while I work, which is my AirPods on. Um, I did want to share a short story with you guys as well. So uh, when I was a kid, I was about eight years old. My parents purchased this large farmhouse way out in the middle of nowhere, and they actually happened to have known the owners prior. And the owners um, had lived there for like 40 years, 
and um, they actually ended up passing away and my parents acquired the house and uh, the house was built in the 1880s and it was this huge old farmhouse and it was on 12 acres of land there was a pond absolutely gorgeous in the middle of the country and um, we were all watching the Super Bowl my entire family and keep in mind we are a large Catholic family um, so my parents don't believe in ghosts and I didn't until this experience we believe in familiar spirits such as demons but um, we're all sitting there watching the Super Bowl and we were eating chili in the living room and um, an apparition, a full body apparition, it looked like a shadow man, walked in the living room, leaned against the doorway, looked at us, turned around and left. And everybody in that room saw it. Even my parents say they saw it, which is a big deal because my parents are the type of people that are like, don't give anything power, don't acknowledge it, so on and so forth. So then a couple months goes by and it's Thanksgiving and uh, we've got a whole bunch of family in town. My mom's a great cook. So typically everybody ends up at my mom's house for Thanksgiving. Um, some of my older sis, uh, siblings would come back into town and we're all sitting praying at the dining room table before we're about to eat. And we hear a baby cry upstairs coming from the second floor of this house. However, nobody had a baby at that time. There wasn't a baby in this house. So uh, probably about three years later, my dad is looking at adding an addition onto the house and doing some things to it. And he goes to the city and requests the original plans. And it takes him a couple of months to get it. But they do end up giving him some records um, from the 1800s and early 1900s. And um, in the 1800s, the original plan of the house was much larger. There was an entire different wing on it. Um, however, in the 1900s, it became a hospital, and then it became a children's home. Um, in the time that it was a children's home, it had a fire, um, and it essentially lost an entire wing of the house, and 13 children died in the house. Shortly after that, my parents sold the house and moved into a different, even more creepier one. I mean, an interesting thing to put on the MLS. 13 children perished here in a fire when it was once a house hospital. Great view in the gar- the garden. For breakfast beautiful tulips though is that where the call ended or did you just stop it there that's where it ended what like right. you don't end a story like that you don't tell this creepy ass story and then go and then they moved into a creepier one boom yep <laughs> wait i need more to that story i want to hear more about the creepier house because yeah. what could be creepier than a house the way he just described? When the children like, are walking through the house at night with glowing eyes, that would make like it every, a little creepier. But, I mean, what could be a worse backstory to the home you live in? No. Uh, how do you sell? I mean, obviously it wasn't uh, portrayed when they bought it uh, that way on the on the MLS. Do you have to reveal that you have knowledge of these things now? I don't know. You know, is that a... Is it one of those, like, if you dig for it and you find information, you may not want to know, but now you know it, so you have to admit you know it? You know? I mean, See, although, I'd be pissed I think if I found out this shit. house had a whole wing on it Yeah, 13 children died. Well, I think... And I'm hearing them crying. It would be nice to have that disclosed, but I think they're probably... If they're, they're going to uh, say, you know, the last time the gutters were cleaned was six weeks ago, and it was really three years uh, when they checked that box... I don't think you're going to get them to so readily admit that uh, 13 children died in the house. If they are aware of it. You know, I, I mean, you've got a point, but come on. But that is kind of weird when you, you could have some, but your inspector could check that shit. I don't know. Like somebody should know. And inspectors like, don't go like, to like history records of the house. You know, they just, make it just carrots. seems like if they could figure it out. Yeah. Oh sure! Everybody who bought the house should know. I think, but you, it, it, you're not going to sell a house with that kind of story. No, not. I mean, and if you want to go look that up, and if, if you're getting an older home, I would certainly be doing some due diligence on the past of of what's gone on there. If it's a like one owner, two owners, kind of like whatever, you know. What's the worst that could happen? Like, oh, BTK shit, that happened. Um. But I don't know. I mean, if it's got a long history, I want to know. Definitely, I'd want to know what what it's been. Oh, or hell yeah. Find out what I could. But I think a lot of people do that, you know, a little late in the game. But I don't know. Interesting story. Scary. Creepy. Now that person uncomfortable. needs to call back. Yeah. I want to hear the. I want to hear part two because there's another part. As, We're missing it. As Carol would say. Do that to me one more time. 
So, because I say that all the yes, time. Yes, when she hears a ghost story she likes, she's just all of a sudden just oh, pulls that mic up. Oh, I Let thought it was going to start there. One more time. Like a ghost story, like from you. Here she goes. There you go. Do that to me one more, one more time. time. Never in with a man like Whatever happened to Tennille? I think she's still around. Is the captain around still? I think he's dead. Okay. I don't know that, though. Is it like a bad karaoke that she just goes around and does, or it's like the captain's on like the karaoke track, but it's like kids bop? <laughs> that would be kind of weird, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> but so then she does. Yeah, that would be very bizarre. That would be great. All right. That's going to wrap up today's episode of your brain is your brain works in very mysterious ways. <laughs> Real ghost stories <laughs> online. Captain and Tennille with Tennille doing karaoke tracks at uh, like a supper club in northern Wisconsin with kids pop. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's going on these days, you know? All right. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to another episode of Real Ghost Stories Online.